guys, welcome to episode four of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, it's been a week since my last podcast. Um, we've been gone, I think, almost that entire week. We took a little road trip. I say little, it wasn't little, it was long. A long road trip to a close uh, family friend's wedding, which was so much fun. We, we just had a great time. And, um, you know, I was really worried about the kids with a long drive and they did really awesome so thank you that was a big uh a big deal um and i don't know if in hindsight i don't know if it was them doing such a good job um or me just having really really low expectations um i'm sure at this point it's kind of a combination of both but i'll take it they did great um yeah, so it just, it, it's hard, especially, you know, when kids are older, they're fine, they can kind of do their own thing, but with a baby, it's hard, it can be really hard, so um, it's reassuring to me, I've wanted to do some little day trips around the area, and now I know that we can do that no problem if they can stand a, I mean, it was probably a 10-hour drive, so um so yeah it was really fun and I love road trips so I just I really enjoyed getting out and driving my husband really enjoys it so we had a good time even on the drive and um yeah so I was able to I didn't have very much knitting time in um while I was talking with people and socializing I just don't I don't knit at the same time um, I guess because I'm taking care of kids at the same time, it's just a lot. So I did get a lot of knitting in during the drive, as you can imagine. Um, my husband always, always insists on driving, which is fine because I can knit then. And I don't usually get a lot of in, in, uninterrupted knitting time. So that's always a, a great thing about road trips. Maybe that's why I like road trips, why I like to drive. I'm not really driving. He is. So, um, so yeah, I was able to get some knitting in and, um, yeah, we're just, uh, getting back to normal now. And, um, I've been really excited the past couple days because I've started dyeing yarn again and it's been so much fun. It's uh, always kind of a challenge finding a place to do it, setting up. I think for, um, I mean, for those of you who have uh, tried dyeing yarn or do it regularly, you know it is such a mess. It is hot. It is requires a lot of water. Um, not to mention the dye is <laughs> messy. So you can't just do it anywhere. Um, so I found a good spot for it. I dove in, started, and I'm just having, I've been having a blast doing it the past couple of days. So I do have a few skeins to show you that, um, that are already dry, but I'll show you those later in the episode. But um, yeah, that's been really fun. And um, yeah, this week I am drinking from my favorite mug. I'm drinking uh, my favorite licorice tea. I love licorice. It's um, it's good for you. Um, I like a natural energy booster, I guess. But um, this is by Yogi Tea. I think I've talked about it before, and it just has a really good blend of spices. So it's not just licorice, but um, has a great flavor. So if you like licorice, this is a great choice. But yeah, let me show you what I worked on this week. So I don't have any um, finished objects to show you, which is fine because I started a couple. <laughs> um, I told you guys that I was going to start a couple of pairs of socks. So let me start with those and show you what I did. Um, the first one I want to show you, I'm just kind of sorting through. I have bags and bags down here. 
Um, the first one I wanted to show you is, um, it's not a yarn that I showed you last week. This is a yarn that showed up in the mail um, the night before we were going to leave. And I was so excited because it wasn't supposed to be here until we were gone. And this was a pre-order from um, Republic of Wool. And if you guys are familiar with, um, I believe the dyer and owner, her name's Michelle. Um, she is so talented and the yarn is, is just really, really beautiful. And I've never been able to um, buy any of her yarn. It's sold out constantly and um, which is great. I'm really happy for her for that, but um, sad for me that I haven't been able to get it. So uh, she actually listed a pre-order for uh, one of her colorways. Beautiful, beautiful colorway. Um, so I caked it up right away and I'll go ahead and show you the label. It's so cute. So this is what it looked like. Sorry, I can't show you the skein. Um, so this is Grand Scheme in her flossy fingering, which is a pretty standard um, 75-25 superwash merino nylon, 463 yards. And it, I mean, it's in the skein, this yarn was so beautiful. Let me show you. It all caked up. Look at those colors. Oh my gosh, I just, the, the skein itself was beautiful, but all caked up. I love this blend of colors. And then this is um, the sock that I started. So that is, oh gosh, I love how that's knitting up. And I wasn't sure um, who I was going to knit this for, and I've kind of decided, I actually cast on, I think I cast on 64 stitches. I'm using size zero, Addy Sock Rockets, I'm a loose knitter, so that works for me. Um, I think what I'm gonna do with these is knit uh, quite a long pair of socks and um, not put any heel in. And what I'm gonna do is um, probably once Christmas time rolls around, I will, um, whoever I make them for or whoever I decide to gift them to, I will just throw a heel in depending on their shoe size or foot size. So, um, so yeah, I just thought this was really, really beautiful. I love the pink, obviously. I'm a big pink fan, but um, just the contrast. I, I really liked the... Um, turquoise or aqua with the pink, but then the darker colors just, um, I think I've talked about this with other colorways of mine before, it just really grounds it. And um, yeah, I love this. So this has been really, really fun to knit. And um, I like the base too, it's really soft. So yeah, I was excited to get that and start knitting on that right away. Um, let's see. The next one that I was knitting on, I think I left, I don't think I brought the bag in here, so let me go get it real quick. Okay, so um, this is the second sock that I started, and I did show you this yarn last week, and it is so pretty. This is by... Uh, and Vine Yarns, and it is called The Evil Queen. It has a beautiful base of purples, so many different tones, light, dark, and then it has this really beautiful, oh gosh, red. <laughs> I can't think of a descriptive word for this red. Um, it's almost a brick red color in it, which is so pretty kind of an earthy red. It blends really well. And I'm making these socks for my, uh, for one of my girls. And she's a big purple fan. She loves purple. And when I told her the name of the yarn, well, she actually asked, 
I had bought these for her, this yarn for her because I knew she would love it. And so before I caked this up, I asked her, you know, do you like this yarn? Do you like the color of it? Do you want me to make socks for you? <laughs> and of course she did. My girls are so sweet. They love all of their hand knits. So I'm going to keep knitting them as, as long as they like them. But, um, so of course she wanted me to make her a pair of socks. And, uh, before she said yes, though, she said, no, wait a minute. What is the name of that, of that colorway? She knows, she knows the lingo. What's the name of that colorway? And I said, oh, it's called the Evil Queen. And her eyes lit up and she said, yes, absolutely. That's the one I want. <laughs> so she's, um, she likes girly things, but she's not, um, kind of the unicorn mermaid, like super girly girl you see. Um, she's the Evil Queen. That's right up her alley. So this is the sock that I started for her and I'm, I'm really loving this. I think this is such a pretty colorway and I'm not a purple uh, person at all, but I love this balance with the red. I think it's really, really pretty and she is going to love it. So, um, I mean, I love knitting it because it's so fast. And you know what, one thing I should have mentioned um, with the last socks too, is I am doing these toe up, obviously, and um, I used what is the cast on? I cannot remember what it's called. I'll put it down below because I can't remember what it's called. It's a uh, you know pretty standard cast on for a toe up sock, and then I just do um, make one increases as it goes along and then I think this one I can't remember how many stitches I cast on I'm counting real quick um, so maybe 56 I think about 56 stitches and um, she is seven so I think that these will fit her for quite a while and um, yeah, so I hate, I, no one likes to grow out of their socks, but at the same time, um, they, my girls wear them and wear them, and I'm always afraid that they're going to put a hole in them because they just, they're stretchy, they just keep wearing them, so yeah, this was a really good sock, I thought. And the last thing I'm working on is my Wondrous Moth Shawl by Lindsay Deegan. And I've been working on it for probably about a month now. It is a lot of garter stitching, which is fine. Um, I'll be honest, garter stitch is not my favorite. I would rather pearl long rows, long, long rows, like for a cardigan, um, than do garter stitch. I don't know what it is, but so many shawls have garter stitch and I guess it the pain of garter stitch for me uh, compensates with the fact that you are using a larger needle so it goes faster than like a cardigan or something so the fabric that you're knitting just isn't as dense so um, excuse me let me get this So if you watched my podcast last week, you saw that I finished one of the angled sides of the shawl. And um, you guys, if you haven't, I know I've talked about this every week, but if you're new to the podcast, please go find this on Ravelry and check it out because it's a very unique pattern. It's um, just a lot different than um, a lot of the shawls out there, which attracted me to it. And there haven't been a lot of projects knit with this pattern, which I was really surprised about because it is a beautiful pattern. It's so unique. Um, it has lots of different pieces that are either, um, knit side by side with each other. It's, uh, or, um, I guess attached to each other at the end. I'm not, I'm not to the end, I don't know yet. But um, yeah, so this is the second side. 
and let's see, how is that going to go? Well, let me just show you and I'll tell you what the yarns are. This is um, pineapple yarn in Heartbreaker. It is a very saturated red pink with um, some subtle speckles. And then this is pineapple yarn in Waikiki. It is a beautiful, um, I guess a gray base with lots and lots and lots of speckles. Um, as a matter of fact, this section, this section is supposed to be striped. And I um, wanted to just use a lot of this yarn. So I didn't do the stripes. I'm not doing the stripes. And it has an angled side. Um, so I believe this is the side. And um, I'm not going to get it out right now, but this will attach to a teardrop shape um, piece that I've already knit. And it's actually very similar to the color of my sweater. <laughs> so, um, this is going to be really fun. I'm excited. I'm almost done with this section and then um, the blue band will go on top like I showed you last week. And yeah, so I am, I'm very excited to be done with this section, just being honest, um, because I think the next section is the actual triangular shape of the, um, the shawl. So what this will, this will be one side, I'll have a mirror image on the other side, and then um, the triangular shape I am doing in a neon yellow, which I'm very excited about. Um, I've been wanting to use this color for a while. I don't know what it was the past, probably the past two months, I've been really, really wanting to use a neon yellow and I do have one in my shop it's called Saturn and I love it it's just it's super pretty so yeah most of this is going to be a neon yellow shawl <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to look good um I, you know I have a picture in my mind but we all know how that goes so um I think it'll be a very striking shawl when it's done We'll just see. So it's, oops, that's been really fun. So that's the other side. And I do have to say, I am weighing all of my skeins um, before and after I knit with them. And I will have them on my Ravelry project page because, um, for instance, the pink um, piece that goes next to this, I, I want to say it only used it used a very, very small amount of yarn. So if you had a mini or you had just a small amount of leftover yarn, it would be perfect for that piece. Um, on the other hand, this um, section, I barely have, I, I'm hoping I have enough and I think I will. I mean, I just really don't have a lot left. So, um, I, you know, I weighed it. I, I think I'll have enough. So we're well, fingers crossed that I'll have enough. But yeah, so I'm excited about that. That's coming along. I've just been trying to diligently work on that and not cast on more shiny things, which speaking of casting on, I am going to cast on another project. Um, hopefully when it begins, I will have some um, larger things like this shawl done because I am not, I'm a monogamous knitter. I don't like a lot of projects going on. I'm not really sure why. It's just, it's just how I am. So, um, yeah, so casting on. I talked to you guys last week about the Beekeeper Cardigan Knit Along, and it's hosted by Marie of, um, she's All of Knits on Instagram. And I just thought this was a really um, interesting knit along because it's a four day uh, cardigan knit along. So basically you are making a cardigan in four days. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really have a lot of knitting time every day. So um, 
I don't know how well I'll do with this nut along, but I asked you guys last week if you were going to do it, and a lot of you said that you were going to, so I decided to jump on the bandwagon and go for it. So um, I'm really excited for that to begin, and um, if you guys are interested in doing it, um, there's the pattern is, I believe it's for sale on Ravelry right now. Um, the knit along doesn't begin until July 1st. Um, I really should have checked these details instead of relying on my memory right now because my memory is not the sharpest right now. <laughs> but um, that gives you plenty of time to find your yarn, knit a swatch, um, you know, double check what size you're knitting, just get it, getting everything together, caking your yarn, that takes, that's an effort, right? So um, doing all those things, I think it, it in, ensures that you have a speedier uh, finished object. So, um, so anyway, so I was thinking like, what, you know, what kind of yarn did I want to use? And, um, I gravitate toward bright colors, but I'll tell you what, when fall hits, it's it's a small period of time. I want to be wearing fall colors. Like, give me the pumpkin oranges, give me the golds, give me all these colors, you know, the moss greens, um, because I want to be wearing those colors when I go to Starbucks and get my pumpkin spice latte. You know what I mean? Like, you get the fall bug, you want to be wearing those things. So um, I actually dyed up a color and um, I have it here. I just finished it. I dyed it up yesterday. This is the color I will be using. This is called um, Honeycomb. And I was going to call it Honey. And my, um, my seven-year-old said, no, mom, you've got to call it Honeycomb because that's a way better name. What am I? Well, what do I know, right? So this is it. This is the color I'll be using. I have fuzz on it here, but I think this is such a cool color. It's uh, basically a tonal, but it does have flashes of these warm colors in it, which I think are going to look really, really nice with the honeycomb stitch in the cardigan. So I am loving this color. It is, um, if you're familiar with my Midas colorway in my shop, this is similar, except this is richer, deeper. Um, I thought about using Midas and then just decided to make a whole new colorway because why not, right? But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to use this. I've dyed up my yarn. I am going to cake it up before the knit along starts. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if any of you guys would be interested in it, but I um, am going to put this as a pre-order in my shop starting now when this publishes. I will have this as a pre-order. Um, if you guys are interested, it is a DK weight, I believe it's 231 yards, um, and I will put in the listing for the different sizes, what the recommended yardage is, and skein num number of skeins you would need. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with this color. If you're interested in this too, just look at the comments below. I'll have a link to this listing, and yeah, I'll probably have it up for maybe until the knit along starts. I'll have it up for a couple of weeks. And um, this shouldn't take me very long to dye um, just because I'll make it a priority and, and do it first thing because I know that time is of the essence. You want to get it and cake it up and knit your swatch, right? <laughs> if you're into that. <laughs> but yeah, this is called Honeycomb. It's for the Beekeeper Cardigan knit along and I hope you join me. I think it'll be really fun and I'll show you my progress um, here. Maybe I'll show you, maybe I'll do even like a mini vlog um, for each day, like the amount that I knit. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that out as it, as it comes along. But another thing I wanted to say 
about the cardigan is that, you know, every, I felt like last fall, um, I wasn't really, um, I was pregnant, I was sick, I wasn't really into knitting, but I would have really liked a sweater to wear when it gets cold. But I know this year um, I'm knitting a lot, but I'm going to do gift knits when the fall hits. As soon as there's a little tinge of cold weather, I'm gonna be working on gift knits. And even if I want to work on something for myself, I'm not going to. And I know, I just know myself, I know that's what I'm going to do. So I think this is such a great opportunity, even though it's summer. I, I feel like it's summer, it's, it's very warm here. So um, I might as well net something for myself now. And then when it's cold, I can wear it and start on my gift knits and it's not, it's not gonna be a problem. So um, yeah, really excited about this. But let me show you um, some of the other colorways I've been dyeing. I have a few here today. Um, I, I just started yesterday, so these are a few that I finished yesterday. And um, I do plan on listing these next Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time in my shop. And hopefully I'll have quite a few colorways and bases for you to choose from because um, yeah, I've just, I've really been enjoying um, getting back into the swing of things and dying. I really, really enjoy it. So um, the first one I want to show you is um, the neon yellow I was telling you about that I'm going to use my in my shawl. And I dyed this on a standard sock base, my standard sock base, but I also dyed it in mohair. It's a mohair silk blend and it's, this is so popular nowadays, you guys. And I am really, really excited that I can get this and dye it because this is so beautiful held together with um, either a contrasting color or a similar color. I, I think this is so, so pretty and um, I hope this is reading as it is to me because this is a pale neon. I mean, this is a really, really bright shade, but I love it and um, I hope you do too. This is called Saturn. And the next one I want to show you is the same color that I used in my uh, Wondrous Moth Shawl, the Teardrop Shape, and it is called Bubblegum. And it's also a pale neon and I dyed it on my standard sock base. That will be in the shop. But I wanted to show you guys on the mohair because this is so pretty and I wanna keep it, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna list it. <laughs> I'll dye more if I want it. I just think this pink is so bright and cheerful and uh, these are just the colors I gravitate towards. So this is what these two look like together, which is so pretty. They're really, really pretty together. So I have been, I dyed these on mohair. Um, the last color I want to show you is Waikiki, which I also have in my shawl. And I've, I think because I've talked about my shawl a lot that I've had a lot of requests for these colorways. So um, you saw this in my shawl. This is Waikiki. You've got all these beautiful speckles. And yeah, this is on my standard sock. And then I also have it on the middle hair, which is so pretty. This is just really, really pretty all of these speckles and if you guys are familiar with um some with my i don't want to say my old shop but if you're familiar when i lived in hawaii um this colorway was one that i used to rescan. and so what that is if you're not familiar um i would basically wind the yarn again and in essence mix up the colors um, and that is really great. Um, it's a great technique if you have a messy skein um, or if you 
want to know what it will look like knit up. It just, I think it's helpful to see. Um, I actually really like uh, yarn reskained, um, not, be not just because it looks neat, but I like the way colors look when they are reskained. So I decided not to do it with these. Um, if you guys have a preference, let me know um, either in the comment below or uh, message me on Instagram or on my website. There's a contact button. Um, I'm just really interested to see what you guys think because I personally like them reskeined, but it takes a long time and it doesn't take a long time, but for a lot of skeins, it takes a long time. And um, for some people, it just, I know it really doesn't matter to some people. So um, yeah, just out of curiosity, I'd be really interested to hear what you think about that. So these are Waikiki and these will be in the shop next Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And this is just the first batch that I dyed yesterday. Um, I will definitely have more colorways. Um, today I dyed up, um, I dyed flamingo, I dyed shrimp cocktail, and what was the other one I dyed? Wow, I can't remember. Well, anyway, I definitely did those two. They're beautiful, I'm so happy with them. Um, Wow, I really cannot remember the other one I died. Yep, like I told you, the state of my memory, if I'm not doing notes, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> but uh, hopefully I'll get another podcast out to you guys uh, before they go live on my shop next Friday. And I'll show you all the rest that I've died. Um, if I get really ambitious and I get lucky and I get some get enough time, I um, am planning on doing some kits for you guys and I have some really, really gorgeous, gorgeous mermaid fabric and um, yeah, I love kits. I think they're really fun and if I find a fun fabric, um, I like to, that kind of inspires me to dye a coordinating yarn. I think it's so fun to put into a kit. So. Those may be available next week. If they are, I will definitely let you know on Instagram or on this podcast. Um, but they will be really fun. They will include a charm. Um, so kind of a fun way to kick off the summer. But the last thing I wanted to leave you guys with is I have had this um, shawl sitting here for the past several podcasts. And it just hit me the other day that I've never talked about it. So um, I wanted to talk about it today really quickly. And um, yeah, because it is hands down, this is my most favorite um, thing I've ever knit. I love the colors. I love the pattern. I love the shape of the shawl. This is the um, Dotted Rays Fade by Stephen West. I'm a big Stephen West fan. I think he is incredibly creative. I like his use of color, um, techniques, shape. He's just, um, I, I really enjoy it. I think it's a really fun knitting challenge, um, his patterns are. And he just had, he actually had a, um, a sale and a couple weeks ago maybe. And I saw it and I bought guys, I probably bought like six or eight of his patterns. So I need to be thinking about that and thinking of knitting some of his, um, some of his patterns. But I think he has a mystery knit along at the end of the summer, doesn't he usually? Because I did a couple of years ago, I knit um, my building blocks shawl and that was a mystery knit along. That was crazy. That was, I mean, that is an awesome awesome shawl but anyway I digress this is um, so this is the dotted rays fade it started here and then it has these gorgeous large increases as you go along I believe I used four different um, colors in this shawl this is such a great shape um, as I've talked about before I don't like 
really deep um, shawls. And so this really is just, this is just exactly the shape that I like to wear. Um, this is probably the deepest part and it is maybe, I mean, it's not even 18 inches long. I would, or 18 inches deep, I would say maybe 14. And it's really quite long. But um, the colors I used in this are, this is pineapple yarn in Coral Canyon. Then I faded it into a, um, I believe this color here, See right here. This was an experimental dye lot from Jinx Yarns, which uh, well, I love it. It's on a sparkle. It, it's really, really pretty. It has gray mixed in, and um, yeah, gray and coral and peach, so it coordinates with the Coral Canyon really well. Um, and then the third color was a was um. I don't want to say it was a mini skein, but it was a smaller, maybe a 50 gram skein from Koigu. And I do not remember the color of this, but isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. This is, you guys can tell I gravitate toward reds and pinks because that is so pretty. Wow. That's so pretty. And then the last color I faded into, um, this bottom color, is by Homespun House in Mirth, and I love that. That's one of my favorite, favorite colors. I always say that, and I, I end up having like a hundred favorite colors because I just, I really like color, but um, yeah, so this is such a beautiful shawl. I am, um, I'm not one to say that I would knit another pattern again. I, um, Usually once I knit a pattern, I'm done with it and I want to move on to new shiny things. Um, but this is definitely one I've thought about knitting again, just because it is so wearable. And um, yeah, I, for some reason, I just really, really gravitate towards this um, pattern. But anyway, so that's the shawl that's on my my little dress form back here. And um, yeah, I should probably change it up and show you some other things that I've knit in the past. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that next week. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, I think that's it for this week. Uh, if you are interested in the um, honeycomb colorway um, for your own pattern, for a different sweater pattern, um, or for the beekeeper cardigan knit along, um, just check out the comments below or the notes below. I will have the pre-order set up for this. Um, I'm, I will get it out really quite quickly. Um, and I'll probably have that listing up for, um, probably for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. So if you're interested in that, uh, just check it out and um, until next week I'll just be dying yarn being busy and hopefully I'll have some really great things to stock my shop with so I hope you guys have a awesome week and enjoy your knitting and the warm weather and I will hopefully see you next week bye